Hello, I'm Sarah Murphy. Thanks for joining us this evening for ABC 4 News at 10. We begin tonight with breaking news. A flight heading from JFK Airport in New York to LAX in California was forced to emergency land today at the Salt Lake City International Airport. Now we're taking a live look at the airport right now. According to the New York Post, they're reporting the plane slide ejected and injured a crew member. Now that crew member they're now reporting is in the hospital. The flight again was from LAX to J from JFK to LAX. When the aircraft's pilot announced that the plane would need to emergency land in Salt Lake, you're looking at videos we received from passengers on that plane. They're saying they were sitting near the back of the plane when they heard an explosion. They said they reported hearing screams from the flight attendant. Now they're now in LA. They did make it, but they say today was really a horrific day. So we're going to continue to stay and keep you updated here on ABC4. Right now, information is limited, but you'll find all our updates both on air and online at abc4.com. In other news, a 16 year old boy today is recovering after an overnight shooting that left him with a bullet wound in the ankle. So as of now, police suspect the young man to be involved in a shooting that took place in a Mill Creek parking lot. Here we're finding ABC 4's Annika Johns here in studio and we're learning about what happened. Annika, can you tell us what are they saying? Yeah, Sarah, that's right. So right now, information is still very limited. But when I spoke to those who live and are in the area, they told me that they just have feelings of nervousness and they're anxious that those who opened fire are found and held responsible. Shards of glass litter the parking lot of 3292 South Richmond Street. These shattered pieces are all that remain of what took place just hours before. It was a bit of a surprise and shocking actually to see something like that happen in your own neighborhood. Just after 10.30 p.m., Salt Lake PD received multiple 911 calls reporting shots being fired in the parking lot outside of multiple businesses. When police arrived and started their investigation, they determined that two cars had pulled into the parking lot. One individual in one of the cars shot at a truck where two individuals were standing. At least one of the individuals standing near the park truck returned fire. Multiple cars were hit and officers found a bullet hole that pierced through a business's window. I moved down to this area from downtown a few years ago just because of that reason I just wasn't feeling safe and it kind of hits a little close to home to be honest. While investigating the area, officers received word that a 16 year old with a gunshot wound in the ankle was dropped off at the hospital. When speaking to those that live in the area, they said that having an incident like this makes them feel a little nervous, but they're glad that it wasn't any worse. I really hope they catch the individual and you know, they're held responsible because that it could have probably been a lot worse. Garcia continued saying that this incident isn't going to keep her from the area. Well, I did walk over here to Harmon, so I have to get certain things. However, she does advise everyone to keep an eye out. Stay vigilant. Just be aware of your surroundings. I don't know. Just keep a watchful eye out. I think everything will be fine. At this time, the 16 year old is believed to be one of the shooters. His injuries are non life threatening and no charges have been made. At this time, Salt Lake PD is asking for your help. And if you have any information, they're asking you to contact them at the number you see on your screen. Reporting live from the newsroom, Annika Johns, ABC4 News. All right, thank you, Annika. Now new at 10, Salt Lake City search and rescue teams rescued a hiker who was stranded in Little Cottonwood Canyon for over six hours. Crews say a man was trying to base jump from a lit ridge in Little Cottonwood into Bell's Canyon on Thursday. Now they say he couldn't climb onto the ridge safely, so he turned around and tried to hike back down when he got stuck for six and a half hours. Seven rescuers tried to climb different routes to reach and save him, but they say loose rocks and boulders made the area pretty dangerous. So they called in a Department of Public Safety helicopter and were eventually able to fly the hiker and the rescuers to safety. A man is in jail after police found 100 pounds of methamphetamine in the bed of his truck. You're looking at a picture of that now. Grand County Sheriff's Office pulled 22 year old Hermaine Quintana over on the I-70 on Friday to check his truck's window tinting. Now officers say Quintana was breathing rapidly and messing with his face, so they brought in a drug dog to search the truck. They found the methamphetamine in a duffel bag and a loaded gun in the center console. He was booked in the Grand County Jail. And this week we're celebrating Bryce Canyon National Park's 100th birthday. So here's some shots 
from the park in honor of its birthday. The National Park Service says Bryce gets more popular every year, so they say it started with around 20,000 visitors in the first few years, and just last year, there were more than 2 million visitors, so a big increase. So if you've needed a reason to visit Bryce recently, now is the time to do it, especially with this nicer weather we've slowly been having here. So let's check in with meteorologist Garrett James in Southern Utah in for Nate Larson today. Now, Garrett, can we expect this good weather we saw a little bit of today? Can we expect it to stick around over the next few days? Well, things, unfortunately, Sarah, are going to be changing. And if you're wanting to go out for any hikes, well, it's not really looking like it's going to be for the better as we've got a storm system approaching from the southwest this evening that is going to be causing more shower and thunderstorm chances. So what happens is with this low pressure system right here, it's going to be moving into the area. But one thing that you'll notice is these winds that are going around this low pressure system while well, they're moving in a counterclockwise fashion. And if you've been here long enough, you know that whenever we see these low pressure systems coming in from the southwest like this, we see an influx of moisture. And as that happens, it causes shower and thunderstorm chances to return and hang around for a couple of days. In fact, we are looking at the chance for maybe even some slight severe weather chances tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening as this low pressure system will have enough energy to maybe cause some small hail, some gusty winds, brief downpours, and some frequent lightning. So that being said, this is going to continue moving into the area and provide thunderstorm chances for the next few days. I'll have more on that coming up here in just a few minutes. All right, thank you, Garrett. Now, new tonight at 10, the 2023 Miss Utah final competition is wrapping up right now, and we're waiting to hear who the new winner is any minute. The Miss Utah Scholarship Organization is an official state preliminary of the Miss America Organization, one of the largest scholarship organizations for women in America. The organization says they promote academics, community service, and communication skills, and is considered a launching pad for women to further their academic and career goals. We do have young women from all walks of life that come to the Miss Utah organization to compete for scholarship dollars. And it is very diverse and that's what's wonderful and that's what makes up the state of Utah and it represents the full state of Utah. So as soon as they announce the winner, she'll give a statement regarding her community service initiative and her hopes for her term as Miss Utah. We'll have that winner announced both on air and on our website. The event tonight was hosted by Good Thing Utah's very own Nisha DeJaring. Hundreds of athletes with special abilities are celebrating the Special Olympics Utah Summer Games today. ABC4 News went to the competition to cheer on the athletes and find out what it takes to be a champion. At the sound of the whistle, these athletes are off. It's loud cheers and big support from fans at this year's Special Olympics Utah Summer Games. I think that's the coolest part about coming to one of these events is if you look in the stand and you just see the hundreds of fans cheering for their child, their athlete, their friend. Um, it's just, it's, it's a very empowering thing. And even the volunteers we had today were like, wow, this is such a cool cool event. Over 350 athletes with special abilities from age two and up competed in different track and field events. Everyone was a champion today. Athletes like Jesse Eden ran in more than one event. His time was one minute 26 seconds in the 400 meter run. Day pass and try harder. From the warm ups to the finish line, volunteers say there's a winner in everyone. Our like little motto is we reveal the champion in everyone. And so when you come out to these events, you really do see that. Special Olympics Utah's next big competition will be a top golf tournament later this summer. So for more information on you can help and volunteer, you can head to the website you see right there on the bottom of your screen. And coming up on ABC4 News at 10, Trump's GOP rivals are demonizing the Justice Department following Trump's indictment. More from the campaign trail. Well, while we have a little bit of rain out there at the present time, we've got more rain on the way. I'll have more on that and everything that you need to know coming up here in just a few minutes.